but I learned fast. Soon I knew how to pick the best produce from, and the freshest fish, how to choose the right lines to buy the best food in the shortest time. I also learned to stand in one line while having my place held in another so I could be sure of getting everything grandma wanted despite the shortages. Every morning at 5.30, I left the alley. I hurried through the empty streets, feeling excited and proud. I was a grown-up now, doing a grown-up's job. I was clearly not one of the pampered bourgeoisie. One day, grandma got sick, and I took over the cooking as well. When the old square German clock struck 12, Ji Yang appeared at my shoulder. You said lunch would be ready by now, he grumbled. Stop bo- just stop bothering me, will you? I pushed my sweaty hair off my forehead. The kitchen, located on the landing, and crammed with pots and pans and a two-burner gas stove, was crowded and stuffy. With the heat from the sun outside and the heat from the stove in front of me, I was simply melting. I turned to the instructions mom had left for me, steam the eggs for 20 minutes, and then add some soy sauce. I lifted the cover of the wok and gasped in dismay. Oh no, the bowl holding the eggs must have overturned into the boiling water. Now instead of steam eggs, I had a pot full of egg soup. I decided to make the egg soup with the rice, which I had burned earlier anyway. I poured some soy sauce into the whole mess and shouted, lunch is ready. Ji Young did not seem as hungry as he had been. Ji Young picked at her plate. Grandma said I did very well, but I noticed she hardly ate anything either. I worried that her arthritis had gotten worse, even though she had been lying down all morning. Can I get anything for you, Grandma? I asked. No, I'll be all right. When your mother gets home, I'll have her, make, I'll have her take me to the clinic for acupuncture. That always helps. We can take you to the clinic, Ji Young says. I gave him a questioning look. The neighborhood party committee has a pedicab in their courtyard, he said. You can borrow it if someone in your family is sick. I can ride it if you help me get it, if you help me get started. Sweetie, that's nice of you to offer, but I think you'd better get some experience first, Grandma said. I've ridden it lots of times, Ji Young saw my face, and just as Grandma coughed, he meant it softly, well, a few anyway, to practice. Mom won't be home till late, I pondered aloud. If, if we help push and Ji Young goes slowly, we could do it. If you're sure, Grandma said, she must have been in a lot of pain. That decided me. Ji Yun helped Grandma down the stairs while Ji Yang and I got the pedicab. Standing in front of us, it seemed much bigger, much blacker, much less friendly than I remembered. Slowly, we pushed it back to our house. Grandma clambered stiffly into the covered seat in back, and we set off. Ji Yang's legs were too short, so we had to stand up to turn the pedals. Ji Yun and I pushed from behind. The pedicab moved cautiously down the alley and entered, in, entered the busy street. The traffic light turned red and the pedicab slowed down as Ji Young pressed the handbrake. We came to a smooth stop. Ji Young gave a confident smile and I began to relax. The light turned green. Ji Young stood on the pedals again, but the pedicab did not move. Push, he shouted, and I leaned into the pedicab with all my might. At last, it began to move. We had just mastered a slight rise and, a, and had reached the middle of the intersection when a bus horn blared in my ear. The light had changed without our realizing it. I'm sorry. The light had changed without our realizing it and the bus driver was waving at us to get out of the way. I gave, it, I gave a start and nearly fell just as Ji Yang picked up some speed. By the time I recovered, the pedicab was 10 yards in front of me and gaining. Ji Yun had stopped while she saw me slip. Now we both ran after the pedicab. Ahead of us, Ji Young turned back to smile at Grandma, and the pedicab swerved crazily toward the curb. I shouted. Ji Young turned back and yanked on the handlebars. One back wheel jolted up over the sidewalk and back down onto the street. Ji Young did not slow down. We finally caught up to them at the next red light. As we panted up to the pedicab, the light changed. Push, Ji Young said over his shoulder. I shook my head. You better slow down. You nearly made Grandma fell out when you hit that curb. I looked into the pedicab and saw Grandma kneading her hands nervously. Ji Young has already promised me he would, to be more careful, she said with a stern glance at his back. From his sheepish smile, I knew he sh- that she had given him a real scolding. The rest of the way to the clinic, then all the way home again, we drove slowly and carefully. Even Ji, Ji Young gave a sigh of relief when we were back in the alley at last. But I heard him boast to mom when she got home from work. It was easy, he said. Anytime grandma needs to go to, go to the clinic, we'll just take her. Dad was often kept up late at the theater, and sometimes he did not come come home until after we were in bed. There were a lot of meetings, he told us. Often I would wake up when I heard him come in, and as I went back to sleep, I heard him and mom talking in low voices. They must have made their decision about the trunks at one of those late night conferences, but the first we knew about it was on on a Sunday morning when they started carrying the trunks up to the roof. The four trunks were part of grandma's dowry. 
They were a rich red leather with a pattern stamped in gold. Each trunk had two sets of brass locks on its front and a round brass handle on each end. When they were stacked up on their rack, they made our room shine. Now dad was going to dye them black so that they could not be considered four olds. Four stools were waiting in the middle of the roof and the first chest was placed among, uh, upon them. The dark dye was already mixed. Dad set to work. Wait a minute, exclaimed grandma. There was a dark stain about the size of a thumbprint on one of the brass handles. She took out her handkerchief and rubbed the handle over and over until it was clean and bright. She looked at the, ch at the chest with a dreamy expression and gently laid her hand on it. Against the deep red leather, his skin seemed even paler. It won't look bad after it's painted, Dad said softly. Grandma seemed to wake up. Oh, I know, she said. You go ahead. She went down to the room and did not come back. Her mother gave her these trunks when Grandma got married. That's why she's sad, Dad explained. I thought of Grandma getting married so long ago, bringing the four beautiful trunks full of gifts to her mother sent that her mother had sent from Tianjin to Shanghai. Grandma must have been excited and exhausted, traveling a thousand miles to marry a man she had never met. Dad started to paint, wielding the brush awkwardly. Dad, it's too dry. See, look, in, look how it's streaking. Dabbed, Dad dipped the brush in, in the dye again. Look out, it's dripping, Dad. Shouting advice, we ran around the trunks excitedly. Eventually, Dad's painting improved, and the first trunk was finished. But the original color could still be seen through the dye, and he had to put on a second coat. ji and I grew tired of watching and went back downstairs. ji stayed to help. An amazing sight stopped the two of us in the doorway. Wow, ji had said. Glowing silks and satins spilled out of an old trunk. The whole room was alive with color. ji grabbed a piece of silk. Gorgeous. Are these costumes, Mom? They were old clothes. Long gowns like the, like the ones ancient courtiers and scholars wore in the movies. Many of them were embroidered with golden dragons or phoenixes. Some were printed with magnificent colors and patterns, and some were even crested with pearls and gold sequins. These belonged to our ancestors. Grandma thought they were too nice to throw away, so we kept them in the bottom of this chest. Mom reached in and pulled out a bunch of colorful silk neckties. She threw them all on the floor. I was worried, Mom, aren't these all four olds? That's right. That's why Grandma and I decided to make a comforter, comforter covers out of them. We can use the ties to make a mop. Seems just, it seems terrible to just cut them all up. Why don't we just give them to the theater or to the Red Guards? Jian had held a gown up in front of her. She was imagining what it, would look, what it would be like to wear it, I knew. The theater doesn't need them, and it's too late to turn them in now. The Red Guards would say that we were hiding them and waiting for the new China to fall. Besides, even if we did turn them in, the Red Guards would just burn them anyways. Grandma looked at me and shook her head as she picked up her scissors. I just couldn't bear to sell them, she said sadly even when your father was in college and we needed money. She picked up a lovely gold pattern robe and said softly, this was a government official's uniform. I remember my, God, my grandfather wearing it. It is pretty, Grandma, I said, but it is four olds. Don't feel bad about it. The long gowns were so large that the back of one was big enough for half a quilt cover. Mom and Grandma discussed the job while cutting, which parts, which parts could be used for covers, which part could be used for cushions. Ji Yun and I were enchanted by the pearls and gold sequins littering the floor. We pestered Grandma and Ma to, Mom to let us have them, and finally Mom si sighed and yielded. Ji Yun and I were overjoyed. We sat amid the piles of silks, picking up pearls and putting them in a jar. Little White was happy too. She rolled over and over among the scraps of silk and batted pearls around the floor. While we were playing, Mom made two quilt covers out of the gowns, one deep purple and the other bright gold. Then she made a pair of mops from the ties. We were delighted with them. You could not find anything like our tie mops in the stores. Dad and Ji Young finally finished the second coat of dye on the trunks. The gold stamping still obstinately showed through the layers, but the deep red had become a dark burgundy. The room seemed dressed up with the glowing new quilts and the repainted trunks. I felt good. We, really, we had really done what Chairman Mao asked, breaking with the old and establishing the new. You did a nice job on the trunks, Grandma said. I don't think the Red Guards will notice them. Ji Yun looked up from the bed where she was lying with her face in the silky new cover. Are the Red Guards going to come and search our house? Everyone stood still. I stopped playing with the pearls. Even little white stopped rolling around on the floor. It's possible, Mom said slowly, but you don't have to be afraid. We're just children, and a search would have nothing to do with you. The new decor lost all its brightness. The pearls I had been playing with lost their luster. I put them down.